Hello and welcome to Texia Tutorials. Uh, this is a brand new series I'm starting on ECMA6. A lot of people call it ECMA6 or ES 2015 or ES 2016, which is another version down the road. Basically, it's a new version of JavaScript that has some of the features that are already implemented or are going to be implemented. So we'll look at it. And uh, the first functionality that I've chose is called Fat Arrows. Uh, you must have seen it. It's like a equal sign and a greater than sign. Um, fat arrows are one of my favorite addition to JavaScript. I've seen a lot of people using it too much uh, in their libraries, but I would say there's a there's a use for it, and you should only use it where it's needed, where you can actually utilize its power. So we'll go through it. Let's get to the coding. So before you do that, uh, you want to make sure that you use browser that supports fat arrows. So right now, pretty much all the latest browsers do. However, I would recommend using Chrome because of its uh, cool debug functionality. So use the latest version of Chrome. And the first thing you want to do is you want to use this sentence. Use strict. You want to use strict mode not because, not only because uh, uh, you want to throw errors when you don't define a variable and things like that, but also you want to tell the browser to use uh, the latest functionality. Now I'm going to create a function in uh, ECMA5 uh, way. So here I have a function get a. All it does it, it there's an argument a and it returns it back. Uh, I know you will never use it, but uh, just to show an example, you can you can convert this into using flat arrow uh, simply by saying uh, let get a equal to a fat arrow a. Basically, the function replaced by the fat arrow, argument comes on our left side, and then the body of the function uh, goes on the right side. Now here you're just doing a and returning it. You don't have to really explicitly say return a if you're using like a one-liner like this, um, and it would work fine. So for example, if I if I call it, I have to obviously comment this guy out. Uh, if I do it, uh, let's say get a one. I console log it. it should return me one. Uh, it returns me one. Uh, now look, let's look at a little bit complex example. Let's say if I wanna uh, do a square of a number. Um, so here I would just simply say Q-U-A-R square. And instead of A, I would say A multiplied by A. So basically whatever argument you pass, uh, it's going to multiply by itself and return me, which would be a square of the argument. Uh, and I'm not checking here right now if I'm, you know, if it's an integer or not. Just want to show you how it works. So if I say uh, square, I would have to, let's say, to do two so you understand if it really works. So I get uh, four which means it does really work. Now, this is a nice, nice feature. However, I would not use it exactly like this. Uh, instead, I would do something like this. If I, in a separate line, I, would, I can say square, and I would put a parenthesis around this. And here, I would put the curly brackets. However, when you put the curly brackets around it, uh, I would use return because otherwise it would not work so this would be a more reasonable syntax than this even if you're using it in one in a one liner so if i remove this and run it i would get four which does the same thing let's say you're not passing any argument and instead you have a outside somewhere uh, let's say you can have a variable a equal to four. 
Now in JavaScript, you can pass, uh, you know, you don't really have to pass a variable. It will take it from the outside scope. So in this case, I would just have to do this. And it should give me uh, 16. So it does. So whenever you're not passing argument, you make sure that you use empty parentheses. Uh, you cannot just put uh, simple space. Now you can, however, you can put underscore. This works exactly the same. Uh, I would not recommend it, but it works. So if I use underscore, it also works. Some people are okay with underscore because they are using underscore.js or something. I'm not sure, but uh, it works. Now, if I have a multiple arguments that I want to pass, let's say if I, instead of square, I want to say multiply. I can say mult, and I can pass A and B, two arguments, and it would return me A and B. So for this, I can say, Two multiply by four, so they should give me eight, and it does. So this is some basic functionality of how fat arrow works. Now let's look at a little bit deeper. Why are we using fat arrow? There are some special things that fat arrow does that a regular function doesn't. Okay, let's look at this particular function. Here I have a function x, and inside I'm setting a new value uh, called this dot val equal to one, um, and I'm also uh, setting a timeout and during the timeout I'm incrementing the the value of val and by one now I have a console doc uh, to, to see if it's really uh, incrementing or not so when I run this I'm getting a, an error called not a number it's probably doing it here because it's <coughs> Be because when I say this dot val inside the, the set time out function, it doesn't recognize this because this inside the set time out function is actually this of that function itself uh, scope. So it would be for this particular function. So it doesn't recognize uh, the outer this. Now to solve this problem, you can do something like this you can say, you can introduce a new variable called that equal to this. And now you can pass, use this that uh, inside here. And that would do, that would solve the problem. Uh, let's look at it. Let's say that dot, well. Uh, it gives me two. Uh, so it really works but uh, fat arrow really does not have its own this which means it's going to use its parents this uh, and it binds it it really works well so here in the example uh, we'll just remove this that thing and inside i can replace with again this and instead of function uh, i will convert it into the, the fat arrow function and now if I run this uh, it would give me two now there are times where you want to use um, the functions own this at that time you do not want to use fat arrows <clears throat> another thing about uh, uh, using fat arrow function is that it does not have arguments uh, variable. So for example, here in this regular function, um, I can pass n number of arguments uh, without really passing any arguments. Inside, I have this uh, uh, arguments available uh, where I can get whichever uh, the, the here is getting the first argument. So if I run this, um, I would get one, which is the the first argument now if i replace this regular function with the fat arrow function uh, and run the same thing it would give me some event something which is not really 
giving you the answer, which means it's not available inside. Uh, there is a solution to it. Uh, ECMA6 introduced what's called spreader operator, which means when you want to pass n number of arguments, you don't say, uh, you don't leave it empty, the argument space. You just put uh, three dots and n. This means I'm passing n, n number of arguments. And inside the function body, you can use uh, this as an n as an array. And it would do exactly the same thing. And it's actually much simpler syntax. So if I run this now, I would get one. I will cover this topic separately in another tutorial, um, but just to explain that this is how it works. So that's, that's it on the fat arrow. I hope you learned something. Thank you. And thank you for watching.